Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Here's a story about how one woman born with a malformation that causes balancing issues had an unsettling experience on a train. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. You want me to move seats? Okay. I, 21-year-old female, was born with a malformation of my inner ear. On top of making my right ear stick out like an elephant's, it also causes me to have balancing issues. To prevent me from toppling over, I use a cane for support and balance. Yesterday, I was taking a train back to my university city. I always get the closest seats to the door since if the train starts and I'm standing, the chances of me losing my balance and falling over are high. Unfortunately, speaking from experience, these seats usually have an indication of priority for people with moving impairments, and this train was no different. I got on and sat down with my headphones in. Not a minute goes by when I'm startled by a tap on my shoulder. I pulled my headphones out and looked up to see an older-looking man. The first thing he said was, You need to move, whilst pointing to the priority seating sign. I was flustered and was only able to stutter, but, but I do before he went away mumbling about not having time for this. I thought that would be the end of it. I was wrong. A minute later, the man came back with a train attendant. He just pointed at me going, tell her to give me the seat. I have priority. And some other ramblings I don't remember. The attendant wasn't mean or anything. She just said, ma'am, this is priority seating. Would you please give your seat to this gentleman? I'm just terrified of confrontation and would rather risk wobbling away to another seat even though the train was already moving. I have one of those metallic folding canes, so I unfolded it and leaned on it to get up. Before I can leave, the attendant just starts waving me to sit back down. Oh, no, it's okay, ma'am, just stay in your seat. The old man didn't say anything, he just looked annoyed like he didn't understand why he couldn't have my seat. The attendant led him away to find you another seat while the guy grumbled something. I just sat there and enjoyed my faceplant-free train ride while drawing and listening to music. Never saw the old guy again, but the attendant smiled at me whenever she passed by. My new favorite phrase for these situations is, you're old enough to understand that not all disabilities are visible. And our second story. Neighbor kept parking on my property, so I had him towed. Backstory. I'm a single mother with two teenage boys living at the end of a quiet cul-de-sac. It's a nice, peaceful neighborhood where everyone's considerate about parking, despite most families having multiple vehicles. I've always parked my single car in my garage, while others usually utilize their driveways in the street. I keep to myself, but I'm friendly enough to wave and say hello to my neighbors when I come and go. About six months ago, a new family moved in next door, a dad, mom, and three teenagers. When they arrived, I made a point to greet them, and they seemed friendly enough. Their garage was used for storage, so their four cars were parked in their driveway. Little did I know their youngest son was just about to turn 16, and things were about to take a turn. Fast forward to last Tuesday. I was at home when I heard a knock on my door around 6 p.m. It was the neighbor dad, Andy, and our conversation went something like this. Andy, good evening. How are you? Me, we're okay. I'm sorry I can't open the door, but my youngest came home from school with a sore throat today. So I'm not sure what's going on with him. How are you, and how can I help? Andy, I'm sorry to hear that. Hope it isn't anything serious. We're okay. My son just turned 16 a few weeks ago, and I'm sure you saw the new truck we bought him. Me, yes, I did. It's such a pretty truck and big. Does he like it? Andy, yes, he does. It's what he wanted, so we got it for him. It's very big, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Let's pause here. When I say this truck is big, I mean it's very big, an F-350. Personally, I think it's too much vehicle for a kid learning to drive, but it's not my money, so to each their own. Me. I don't understand. Andy, we've been getting complaints from some neighbors that his truck is so big they can't get around it when driving through, and we're afraid it might get sideswiped if he continues to park in the street. Me. Yeah, I've had some intense moments trying to get around it myself, but I'm sure he'll get better at parking as he gets more experienced. I'm not sure what this has to do with me. I haven't complained. Andy, oh, I know you haven't complained, which is why I was going to ask you if he could use your driveway to park since you don't use it. 
I was stunned. My driveway? I explained that I do use my driveway when I leave and come home. I also pointed out that I have issues with depth perception, and his son's truck is so big it'd take up most of my driveway, potentially leading to damage. ND wasn't deterred, insisting they'd make sure I could still come and go without any issue. I explained that the only way that would work is if the truck parked halfway on my lawn, which would cause damage. I suggested they let him park in their driveway instead, but ND brushed it off, saying they'd have to park two cars in the street to make that happen. The conversation escalated as I continued to say no, and ND became visibly upset, accusing me of not being neighborly. I lost my temper and told him it wasn't my problem that they bought a vehicle that didn't fit their property. After that, I closed the door and through the peephole, I saw him flip me off before leaving. That Friday evening, I needed to take my youngest son back to the minor emergency clinic. He'd been home sick since Tuesday and his symptoms had worsened. As I opened my garage door to leave, I was shocked to see that enormous F-350 blocking my driveway. I stomped over to my neighbor's house, banged on the door, and was greeted by a very irritated NM, neighbor mom. When I explained the situation, ND appeared and insisted I could get around the truck. I firmly told them to move it or I'd call the police in a tow truck. Eventually, their son came out, moved the truck after some effort, and parked it on the street. As I left for the clinic, I was fuming. I shot off an email to my HOA updating them on the situation and documenting everything. By Sunday, both my oldest son and I were starting to feel ill. My youngest was getting better, so we stayed home all day. However, that evening, my oldest son's fever spiked, and I decided to take him to the minor emergency clinic as well. It was a long night. We didn't get back home until almost midnight. When I rounded the corner to my house, my heart sank. There in my driveway was that F-350 again, this time parked partially on my lawn. I was beyond angry. I called a 24-hour tow truck service, and while I waited, I took pictures of the truck in my driveway. The tow truck arrived at around 12.30 a.m., and I was half expecting my neighbors to come running out, but no one appeared. The truck was towed away without incident. I sent another email to my HOA with pictures and an explanation, then finally went to bed. At 6 a.m., I was jolted awake by someone banging on my door. I knew who it was before I even looked. I grabbed my phone, hit the record button, and opened the door to find ND and his son standing there, furious. ND yelling, where's the truck? Me, calmly, it was towed. You can call such and such company to make arrangements to get it back. ND, you didn't have the right to tow it. You're going to pay to get it back. Me, I had every right to tow an unauthorized vehicle on my property. I told you not to park on my property, and you did it anyway. I won't be paying anything to get it back. ND then launched into a tirade, calling me names and threatening to sue me. I had had enough and told him to go ahead, then closed the door and went back to bed. About half an hour later, the doorbell rang again. This time it was a police officer. He explained that ND had reported the truck as stolen and asked to hear my side of the story. I calmly explained that the truck had been towed from my driveway and I had proof, emails to my HOA, pictures, and a video of the confrontation this morning. The officer took a look at everything, including the time-stamped photos and video, and agreed that I had acted within my rights. He then asked if I wanted to file a trespassing report, which I eagerly agreed to. The officer advised me to keep all the evidence, including the case number and report, in case ND decided to sue. He then went to speak with ND while I finally went back to bed, exhausted but relieved. The moral of this story, don't mess with someone's property, especially after they've told you no. It's been a few days and I haven't heard anything else from ND. I'm hoping he's learned his lesson. But if not, I'm more than ready to call the tow truck again. Unfortunately, your neighbor will probably be a pain for a long time. At least you park your car in the garage so they can't vandalize it. But you might want to think about getting cameras installed so they don't do anything else to your property. And our last story. HOA Karen breaks into my pool and calls 911 on me. Well, folks, here's another story about how the HOA and its snobbish army tried to mess with me again. First, I want to say that my house is not a part of this association. I own my private land, and I would never sign up for this nonsense. I've always been against these intrusive community organizations where a small group of people suddenly decides they can control your life. 
So here's the deal. I have a neighbor, an active HOA member, who decided that her authority extends over the whole world. So it's a summer day, I'm lying on my lounge chair by my pool in a bikini, reading a book and enjoying life. Suddenly I hear a shout. What's going on here? How dare you? I look up and see her, my favorite neighbor, already worked up, waving her hands and yelling at the top of her lungs. You haven't been taught that we have rules here? She screams, stepping onto my property. Have you even read the rules? I'm on my private land here and I definitely don't have to follow your ridiculous HOA laws, I reply calmly, though I'm already boiling inside. This apparently really threw her off balance. She started mumbling something about me walking around naked on the street and that she'd call the police if I didn't get out of her sight. Naked? Yeah, right, a bikini is such a nightmare, especially in your own backyard. I wasn't going to back down. I stayed put, continuing to sunbathe, thinking she'd get the hint and leave. But she seemed to decide that I wasn't taking her threat seriously, so ten minutes later there were two police officers standing on my property. They approached me with smiles on their faces and began, Good afternoon, we got a call about <clears throat> a naked woman running around here. Would that be you by any chance, one of them said, trying to suppress a laugh. Naked? Oh, that's probably me. In this terrible, hideous bikini, I said, pointing to my swimsuit. The officers exchanged glances, and one of them couldn't hold back and burst out laughing. Yeah, that's probably a serious crime. At least ten years in prison, he added jokingly. Meanwhile, my neighbor started her tirade again, claiming that I was breaking all imaginable and unimaginable HOA rules, demanding my immediate arrest and eviction from the neighborhood. Look, I said to the police, she's on my land without an invitation trying to blackmail me here. Maybe she's the one who should be arrested. The officers assessed the situation and then seriously addressed her. Ma'am, you've trespassed on private property. Please leave immediately or we'll have to detain you. But my neighbor wouldn't stop, continuing to shout and wave her arms. In the end, they handcuffed her and led her to the car. Neighbors, having heard all the commotion, started peeking out of their windows, watching as she was taken away, smirking. As my police interlocutors were leaving, they said, Don't worry, ma'am. We'll make sure no one bothers you while you sunbathe in your terrible bikini. I just smiled in response. Yes, please, tell the HOA that I'll be spending the whole summer in this naked state. A few days later, I found out that she was stripped of the title position in the association that she loved so much, and she was slapped with a couple of fines for trespassing. Can you imagine how she took it? My buddy neighbor told me that now she walks around the neighborhood with her head down, afraid to meet anyone from the area. And me? I'm happy that she was deprived of that tiny bit of power she held so dear. Conclusion? From time to time, I remind my neighbors that I have nothing to do with the HOA, and I invite them to come by my pool if they ever want to relax without the fear of encountering the local order fanatics. Why not? It's summer. Imagine if this case was tried in court. The judge would say, you're accused of sunbathing in a bikini on your private property. How dare you enjoy the summer when your neighbors have no sense of humor? Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.